<laughs> Acts chapter two. <laughs> skunk water. <laughs> and um, we're calling this the skunk water uh, episode. Skunk water. My daughter just gave me a can of this. Says it's delicious. So it smells like skunk. Skunk water. <laughs> <laughs> No offense oh to skunks. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, right. okay. Day of Pentecost. Day of Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Pentecost is 50 days, mm-hmm. like you said in the last episode. And what is Pentecost? Uh, celebration. And I, I'm embarrassed because I can't remember exactly, but it's a Hebrew celebration 50 days after Passover. Okay. They all did it. And they would be together in Jerusalem for the Passover and then remain around having come to Jerusalem oh. for the Passover for that 50 day celebration. They stay. For yeah, a lot days. of them stayed or would leave on Passover and come back 50 days oh. later to participate in that. That's yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Um, okay. So they were together mm-hmm. and a violent wind came. They were filled with the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues. And the violent wind, I think it's really important. The word uh, wind in Hebrew is ruach. And the word wind in, um, in Greek is pneuma. And they both mean the same thing. Breath, wind, spirit are synonymously mm-hmm. described by those words. Mm. And Jesus said that the spirit goes where it wants. He says, you can't direct it. He says, you can see its effect on trees and things, but he says, you can't control it. And he says, so is everyone that is of the spirit. Hmm. He doesn't say that's how the spirit is. He says, so is everyone who's directed by the spirit. So when you have that idea in your head of the spirit operating on somebody, that is a picture that's counter to what religions want. They want everybody to operate off a systematized way that the spirit will work on a group Mm -hmm. or within conformity to the group. But Jesus said, anyone who's led by the spirit will be like the wind. Mm -hmm. You can't control it. You'll see its effects, Mm -hmm. but don't you think that you can? And so it's another subtle thing against organized religion. Mm -hmm. The spirit does what it wants with the individual believer and no pastor, reverend, Bishop can say, no, no, no. That's one another problem with uh, organized religion. Mm. It tries to actually capture and then utilize the Holy Spirit. Mm. It's it's really bad. I hate it. That is really bad. Yeah. Um, I I have one question that's probably really specific to me, but I I associate that with like chaos, which. I feel like chaos is associated with darkness. Okay. So how do you de- decipher those? Um, the the scripture describes the spirit, the fruit of the spirit, and that it's orderly. And Paul will say that it's not chaotic, it's not crazy, mm-hmm. it's orderly. Yeah. So we see the wind move, mm-hmm. and it's violent. It says a very mm-hmm. strong wind. But it doesn't mean that it brought chaos and confusion. It was just powerful. It was present. But the chaos that people have used to bring that, I agree with you. Chaos is dark. But like you're saying, I'm trying to, like you're saying religion brings order where the, where the spirit is actually moves on its own. The person that has the spirit in them moves on its own and is kind of. Yeah. Can't be controlled. Right. That sounds chaotic. No, it's not chaotic. It's it's can't be controlled uh, it, by men, but definitely controlled by God. And God's not chaotic. Mm-hmm. So it might appear like those who think the dancer's mad mm-hmm. can't hear the music. Mm-hmm. It might just be that we are looking at the dancer and saying, no, do it this way and do it at this mm-hmm. time. And the dancer's like, no, mm-hmm. you know, and God, that's not chaos. It's just not in, in conformity with what we think order should yeah. be. Yeah. And wind, will, it's not like wind like bounces in all these different direction. Way. It like goes and it might move. Right. But it like moves. It has a path. Like crazy. Yeah. yeah. It's not like winds from everywhere. Yeah. It is very controlled power. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Okay. It's hard. I, yeah. It's a good question though. Um, so people, it's saying, 
They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire. Then they spoke in tongues or languages, says the commentary. Um, and now they're staying. They now they were staying in Jerusalem. Sorry. Now there were staying in Jerusalem, God fearing Jews from every nation under heaven, and they heard it. Okay, so stop there. You can see in the way Jews write, every nation under heaven. Mm. Okay. It was only every nation under the heavenly economy that God built the Jewish nation. That's how to see it. Because if it was every nation under heaven, then Chinese people would be there mm. and every, Filipinos. And you can't do that with the scripture. Mm. So it's every nation under the heavenly economy that was Jewish. Mm. And he lists them there. He gives names of them. Yeah. Um, Phrygia. Per Parthians, Met Met Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. yeah. You don't see France there. You don't see the U.S. You don't see yeah. Canada. You see those nations. So if you're a biblical literalist, you see every nation under heaven was there. So then you have to say, oh, yeah, but that's not how to read the scripture. It was every nation under that heaven. And that shows you mm -hmm. how to see heaven in that day because that heaven was going to go away and a new heaven would replace it. Mm -hmm. This earth is going to go away and a new earth would replace it. That Jerusalem is going to go away and a new Jerusalem is going to come. Mm -hmm. This is helping you see that transition coming. Mm -hmm. Okay. Also, how very specific the idea of tongues is. What do you think? Like, what the heck? Yeah. They, before I even read that the other nations were there, when I saw that the Holy Spirit filled those people and they spoke in tongues. It was very like clear that the assumption is they started speaking in languages that would equip them to talk to people on the journey they're about to take. Yeah. Like those people from Mesopotamia. Yeah. It. yeah. So that's what tongues is. There's your biblical definition of tongues. That is when you speak a language that other people speak that you've never spoken before. Yeah. That's what the Holy Spirit brought to them there. And there's a contextual proof mm -hmm. of what tongues is. People for go nuts. The, for them. For the, I mean, that's what the speaking yeah. of tongues was. Yeah, I feel like there's even a way to... So if there's not a literal application of this to us now, but we take it in principle, there's a way... To, I feel like there's a way to understand them... Um, gaining the gift of tongues when hit with the Holy Spirit as when you have the spirit in you, you're able to like communicate with people of a different mindset, mm -hmm. basically. Okay. Yeah. You know, that would be a principle. Yeah. Like they have a different language and you can like, right. So like relate to them right. or something, but that's as far as it would go yeah. now. Well, unless there's somebody who magically is visiting, uh, you know, someplace they've never spoke that language. They meet somebody and the spirit moves them to be able to explain the gospel. I don't say God doesn't do that, but this was a very centered, magnificent expression of that happening in one place with everybody at the same time. Yeah. You know, it might be hard for you to believe that uh, somebody who's never spoken French could go into a French neighborhood, the Holy Spirit could move them, and they could speak in it. Mm -hmm. But I only give it as a possible thing because many Christians say that happens. I had the gift of tongues fall upon me when I visited Africa, and I met a little man who only spoke Swahili, and suddenly I was speaking Swahili, and he understood perfectly I was hit with the gift of tongues. That's what they'll say. That's crazy. Oh, yeah. I don't know how to feel about that. Okay, and, and before you move on, so the people there are able to speak the language of all the, and they understood, mm -hmm. right? So we know that all those different languages were understood, and that's the speaking of tongues. Paul in chapter 9 of Corinthians will say, tongues, the gift of tongues is for the unbeliever, okay? It's not for the church, Okay, so they have churches now, Pentecostals, you can go in and they'll speak tongues. He says plainly, it's not for the church. It's to 
make unbelievers see something radical is happening here, which is exactly what happened there. Mm -hmm. So when people go in churches and they're going, hey, it's bullshit. It's pure bullshit. It doesn't belong in the church. And Paul says it. Well, if that wasn't clear before, <laughs> it's definitely certified now yeah. by the freaking text that they took it from. But I love your interpretation of it today that maybe the principle is because the fruit of the spirit is love. Mm -hmm. And if you're speaking with the power of the spirit, you're speaking with a tongue of love that transla transcends language. Yeah. Yeah. And, and th that's how these principles yeah. work. Yeah. Like transcends opinions yeah. and like pre pre predilections or whatever, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Like, I don't know. I d it seems like with all of the, that was for them and that was the material thing that they needed. Mm -hmm. Like that is a really specific, like they needed the ability to speak in the language to other people around them to do the job that they're being asked. Right. And it would have, n it would not be the same for us. Right. Like, right. With speak, literally speaking a different right. language. Especially but, since now we have technology that will translate yeah. everything for us. So there's another evidence of the foolhardiness of taking these spiritual things from that day, mm -hmm. specific to that little time and trying to replicate it. Mm -hmm. And yet millions of people try. Mm -hmm. Great call there. Well, okay. That's nice of you, but um, tongues. Let me find my notes. Sorry, they started to gather. So people started to gather and wonder that they heard their language mm -hmm. tripping out, um, and other people said like mocked that they had too much wine, mm -hmm. of course. But is it like a physical? hearing didn't they come from like all across the city like what i wondered what that was like people heard was it like rumors that they heard of the tongues being spoken or, or did people miles away literally hear this guy like i hear my language being spoken i'm gonna follow it the city of uh jerusalem during the holidays would swell so thick with people mm. because they had to come in from outside places for the high holidays so they're visiting from these different places and when it says they heard they probably literally heard in the crowd and you know how crowds go when they hear yeah. there's callers at circuses come over here yeah. they probably heard and they just gathered more about three thousand souls okay so day of them being a day of pentecost they're like in the middle of a crowd when yeah. this happens yeah we know that for sure. Yeah, because Pentecost is, they're in Jerusalem. They're waiting for the Holy Spirit. They're gathered together. The Holy Spirit comes like a rushing wind. Tongues of fire is over their heads. They start speaking in tongues and mm. a crowd gathers. Okay, so, but they didn't know the Holy Spirit was going to come no, on Pentecost. No, they didn't know right? when. Well, so I don't were... know. I don't know if they knew it would be on Pentecost. Jesus says, go and wait. Yeah. But maybe they did. But like the assumption is that they didn't. And they were gathered for the holiday. Yeah. Okay. Okay. They weren't. Okay. I, I hear you. Yeah. And then the spirit fell as promised. Okay. I see. Um, okay. So people stood up in front or Peter stood up in front of the crowd. And I write, is Peter a figurehead? Why does he do this all the okay, time? Okay. Stop. <laughs> Peter was thought believed to be the oldest of the apostles. Oh, okay. He was also thought to be the largest, strongest Ooh. of the apostles. He was also impetuous, meaning he didn't care if he said, screw you, uh. I'm doing it. So he was very impetuous. And then thirdly, um, Jesus said, Peter, remember when we studied this? Upon this rock, I will build my church. I will give you the keys to the kingdom. And I said to you, what do keys do? And I said, they open things or, or lock things. So Peter felt, having Jesus told him, I'm going to give you the keys, that he had this responsibility to step up. Mm -hmm. And in, in there were places and times, as we're going to see, that that does work. Mm -hmm. And here is one. When he steps up here, he's bringing, he's opening the gospel, the good news of the resurrected Christ, to these Jews from all over the land. Mm -hmm. And they're going to leave in their language and take the message back. So it, he did have a reason to stand up here mm -hmm. when he did the Matthias thing. No. Oh, because he has. Yeah. No, it's it's 
cool. Yeah. It's not like a put down that he's. No, no, no. Like I, his, but you're I right. See. The first time he was being an idiot. No, well. Yeah. The to your point that it's because before and after the Holy Spirit came down yeah. is really interesting. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, so he explains to people it's nine in the morning. They're not drunk. Yeah. Um, and it's important you read this line, the first verse, first words of the next verse after he says, we're not drunk. It's the third hour of the day. What does he say? No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. Stop. That is one of the most important lines. This is what was spoken of by the prophet Joel. This right here. Uh -huh. This is, this is what it is. Okay. What he's about to say to them is cited by Christians yesterday, yesterday saying the sun is going to be dark. The moon is going to do this. Old men will. This is what's going to happen in these final days. Peter right there says this is that day that was prophesied by the prophet Joel. Wow. Yeah. One of the most important lines in the book of Acts. And what this does he say what, Joel says? This is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. But the the misconception is that people read this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel to for us to look for. No, because that's reading into it. The context says they were saying you guys are drunk. And Peter says, we're not drunk. It's the third hour of the day. This is what was spoken of by the prophet Joel. Okay, wait, let me read it. Okay. In the last days, this is what was, okay, back up. Peter stood up with the 11, raised his voice, addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. This is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. Okay, in reference to these people what are not drunk, yeah. as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. Yeah. Like all other things, when they reference the Old Testament, they go, this isn't the case. This is what the prophecy was. Right. And then they keep going with right. the point. So that makes sense. He these people are not it drunk. To them. Okay. And then. And what, is it, what does the, the prophet last, Joel say? The prophet Joel says, in the last days. Stop. When? <laughs> in the last days. <laughs> Aren't we in the last days? <laughs> Peter then said that. And yeah. you can't get around that. Yeah, that's, it's crazy. Okay. Like the literally right when the Holy Spirit yeah. dropped. Yeah. Dropped. Okay, it dropped. And just to let you know, <laughs> God said in Jeremiah, in these days, I will pour my spirit out and I will write their lo my laws on their hearts and minds. So what Peter is doing is he's saying, these are those days. These are the days that God said I would do this mm. as, as prophesied by Joel, who said, and now you read what Joel said that Peter cites. Okay. All right. So I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Wait, the, at this point, the crowd has just, the crowd doesn't know the spirit dropped. No, they thought they were drunk. They thought they were, but some people were like, how could this be? Mm -hmm. I hear my language. Yes. They were like hopeful, but Something didn't know it was the spirit. Right. Okay. So, and that's what he's speaking yeah. to those people who are confused yes. about if they're drunk or, okay. Yes. In the last days, God said, I will pour out my spirit on all people. So he's clarifying that's not drunkenness that, okay, your sons and daughters will prophesy, blah, blah, even on, even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in both those who? days, both men and women, both men and women. So what's happening here? Even Old Testament servants. before they had prophets who were, you know, and they spoke by the spirit one. Now God says in these last days, I'm going to open this up to everybody. Men, women, the old men, young men, they're going to have the spirit. Yes, yeah, servants. Yeah. It's opened up now. When the mm. spirit falls, forget about all the this. It's yeah. open. Get okay. it? Keep going. I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. Servants, men and women. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and billows of smoke. 
the sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. When is all this? Come? Before he comes. When did Peter say that was happening? Right now. So we have Peter saying this is the day when all of this is happening prophesied and it's going to be before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. These are the signs. Well, if you go to Jesus' words on Mount Olives, mm. he gives them the same signs. Remember, they said, mm -hmm. tell us when will these things be? And he says, they're going to have this and this. Peter's just doing the same thing, but he's mm. quoting Joel as mm -hmm. having prophesied it. Get it? Yeah, and the sun turned to darkness and the moon to blood. Is that like a weird thing metaphor it, is it, it yeah like yeah within a month or something the moon's gonna turn change or whatever, like that sort of thing it's like in those last days before the great and dreadful day of the lord when he comes back all these signs will be present okay yeah and josephus who wrote described those things as happening the sun darkening mm. okay we have a secular history of Josephus saying when the great and dreadful day finally came, those things all happened. Mm -hmm. Not knowing what Peter said on the day of uh, Pentecost. But they, does, sorry, does Josephus call it the great and dreadful day? No. Oh, okay, no. sorry. Um, okay, and, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Saved from what? I don't know. The great and dreadful day. All those terrible signs, they'll be saved from that. Christians read that and they say, oh, you need to call on the name of the Lord to be saved to the kingdom, saved from hell, not going. No, he's telling them. This is that day. Now the great and dreadful day is coming. Call upon the name of the Lord and be saved from everything that's going to fall on us as prophesied by Joel. That's what he's saying to them then 2,000 years ago. Hmm. Got it? Yeah. Okay. We're at 20 minutes. Okay. Um, but, okay, so just to reiterate, we'll go on with what he says next, but spirit drops, they speak tongues, people, crowd is confused, Peter stands up, says, let me explain that what's happening, they're not drunk, Joel said that this was going to happen, what you're seeing right now, what you're seeing right now is... In the last days, which implies those are the last days that yes. Peter is in with those people in yes. the crowd. I will pour out my spirit on all people, which is what they're saying. So your sons and daughters, like everyone is going to start to have the spirit, yes. both men and women, servants, prophets, whatever. Um and everyone will prophesy in those days, yeah. which are the last days. Yeah. And I'll show, and I will show wonders in heavens, which is I being God. God. Okay. I will show wonders in heavens, um, signs on the earth below, blood and fire. And the sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. Yeah. Suggesting the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord is the end of the last days. It's the end of the last days. Okay. And that every, will wrap it up. And so everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved yep. from the end of the last yep. days. From the destruction that has been prophesied as coming to us. So the great and dreadful day, the destruction, is the end of the last days, mm -hmm. which is also the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. Yes, and it's the wrapping up of that former economy. Okay, yeah. and everyone who calls on the Lord will be saved from it and will, will experience this thing where the spirit is in them and they're seeing yeah. all this stuff yeah. okay yeah all right it. yeah he keeps going he does and let's we'll, keep going we'll next, next time yeah. okay yeah very good reading that see because it's so easy to read it and not really get it yeah yeah i did not get it no but it, it's right there and most people just can't see it yeah. or I you don't... read it and you're just like okay yeah like fine yeah like yeah. everything is so hard to know how it's significant that goes to your point of a few shows ago that's why knowing at least the story of the old testament helps us understand mm -hmm. the value of jesus coming and the value of jesus coming to those people then mm -hmm. yeah well thank you great stuff you're going step by step it's i love it okay um 
next. Mm -hmm. See you soon.